ready to put some claws on. This is what I need to practice. I would recommend start with a little black dot on a marker pen. Uh, this is just with common sense, you sort of generally know what's right and what's wrong, where to put the claws. If you put two too close to the end, it looks rubbish. And if you put them too close to the middle, also looks a bit rubbish. So I would like, this is where I don't really know what's the best way. Maybe just put one little dot. So it's very thin and very small, so you can put a widen it one way or the other so you get an idea of uh, if you're going to want to adjust it you can um, I like the idea of putting just one where I want it putting my saw frame on straight across like imagining a straight line straight across that would draw a draw across across the center if there's a line this way this would be great if you could get this to work so let's just redo that redo that So this way looks kind of all right, but when I turn it that way, this one looks too far out. Pull that one in a little bit. Now that's not actually too bad. I do quite like where that one's gone. I like the position of that one. I may put a saw cut in and get, get a claw in there and then use that as a guide to get the others in place. So I do that one, then I go across to that side so I can keep looking at it from the side, make sure it's all lined up perfectly. And then we'll try and match it up on the other side. Yeah, that one's nice as well. Okay, a rectangle inside an oval is a kind of good, good way to think of it. Just line that up. A little line in there. <clears throat> That'll give me a guide for a cylinder phrase, which I'll put in now. You don't want to start, ideally start with one a bit thinner than your claw. Or you get a same. A bit thinner, safer. It's kind of the same. <laughs> I'm going to use the same. Because with a thinner one, yeah? Uh, gives you a bit of space to move it left and right, and then it's still okay for the claw. A bit of lube. I'm just doing a straight up. No fancy angles. Halfway in. Oh, that's just tight. Perfect little slot for that claw. If it's in the correct position. Do like it. But then the first one is the easy one. You're just putting it where you kind of like the look of it. It's lining up the others to get them, get them spot on. It's the difficult bit. So there you go. Hold that in position. Looking at the side. Got my horizontals and my verticals looking just right. I just want to go straight up. No fancy tapered angles for this. That is ready to solder on position. And then I'll cut it, cut it off at the length it needs to be. Obviously before you cut the claw off uh, short, have a general look at it. Do you like how it's sitting? You'd be checking your stone on it, making sure it's correct for what you want it to be. Snip that off there. Cab cuts, you need to have quite a long claw, I think, for setting. All right, so I'm gonna put that in the acid for a bit, then use that as a guide to go straight across and get one directly opposite there. And then we'll try and match it up the other side. So I'll just pull this out of the acid. All right, I do actually quite like that position where that is. One little, now I've just gotta find 
put one there directly opposite. One trick I've done in the past to get it the same. Put my saw blade over the top and the teeth are hitting that claw, yeah? And then looking very closely, I can't really hold this very well, but the teeth are touching the claw and they just hit the inner edge there. So holding, make sure it's all lined up nice and straight. You can use that as a bit of a guide. I could mark it there. That's where my claw goes. And you can always put a little, if you like where your nick is, like where it looks, you can always start with a very gentle little saw blade cut and then see, see how it feels. Bearing in mind, the claw is thicker and then it, it goes in a bit. So make sure it goes in at the right angle. You know what I mean? You don't want to phrase it in that way. You got to phrase it in towards the center like you did with that one. The very unforgiving, minuscule little errors will ruin it. You might have marked out perfectly, but then put in the phrase in the claw in, if you get the wrong angle, it can make it look wrong. So my advice would be to proceed. Use your saw blade to line it up, put a mark in it, put a proper mark in it with a marker pen. Then when you're happy with that, put a little nick in it with a saw blade, which is the level I've got to now. Then pick up your bit of wire, hold it over that. Imagine it going into position. Do you still like it? Uh, just looking at mine now. A little bit high. No, I think when it's in position, mine will be all right. Perhaps down a bit. No, it's gonna be all right. So yeah, just keep checking it and double checking it at every little stage. Um, but like I say, it's so unforgiving when you get it even just slightly a little bit wrong. So really, really take your time and work work accurately and carefully. Pulled it down ever so such a tiny amount that way improved it. So there we are, the messy solder join, sorry about that. So I'm not sure if that one looks a bit up compared to the other side. Oh my thingy. So I'm using the, the width of my blade to just go straight down, like I imagine, imagine a line going straight up the middle so that's perfectly making a cross section perfectly horizontal to that vertical line. The oval should be going straight down, just gently touching on those claws. If you can see the oval tilting one way or the other, that means your claws are a bit wonky. I think that's quite good. But there's something I don't like about this one. You've got to watch out for illusions on like your claw might be bent a little bit, might not be quite straight, so it sort of throws your eye off, as we say. It makes you think it's wrong, but actually it could be correct, just your claw is at a wrong angle on the side, like sticking out or something. But that's uh, good enough for now. The next um, next challenge is getting, getting one exactly the same as that, that same position, because it's not obvious where that is. Somewhere around there, but you got to get got to you've got to get it really accurate to do it properly. So I'm going to do it again. <clears throat> Just have it in front of me, facing directly towards me. Just going on instinct. Just where I think is the same. Just with a little dot on the pen. A little black dot. I'm trying to hold this on straight. Have a look. Might be okay where my dot is. Got it on the other side of the claw now, pushing it up. I think it's kind of correct, just maybe a touch. A touch up a little bit. It's obviously just some like mental thing I've got. I can feel myself not enjoying doing this, but the reality is it's not really that different to doing the claws around a circle. This is what I don't like, it's just the, I think it's the uncertainty of every every stage. I 
feel uncertain about how to proceed the whole time I'm doing ovals. That's what I don't enjoy. So I've got a little nick in there, so my claw can sort of click into it. I think that's quite good, you know. I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to phrase it in and then see how it looks. So when you're doing phrasing, if you've never used one before, consider it's a small cylinder and it's spinning. It, it kind of, it's got teeth on it and it wants to pull one way. So there's an element of pulling it back to get it to go straight down. You'll be careful when you're trying to position something very precisely, not for this to wander about because you're, you can move about. All right, he's cutting in more to match the others. I just want to hold it in there. How was this one again? Okay, so that was the teeth on it and the teeth were just on that inside edge. Okay, it needs to go in a bit more. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna cut it in deeper. And pull it this way, ever so slightly. And so for positioning the last one, I was thinking about cutting the uh, groove now. Remember I said earlier about uh, an oval, the claws are positioned basically where the corners of a, a rectangle would sit if a rectangle was over the top of it. So with that in mind, holding it straight, this parallel to those, it should just be able to go straight down and that will be a good guide to where this claw needs to end up. Tell you what, I'm liking cutting this grooves, doing it this way, cutting the grooves first rather than doing one, putting a claw on. When I try this again, which I will very soon, I may, well, I will, just as a a trial to see if I prefer it or get a more accurate uh, finish. Do this first, just cut four grooves around it. I think it might be easier to really judge it and get all four really perfect. General overall looks quite good. Putting my saw blade against it, it's, it's nice and straight on there. So imagine going straight across the middle and then hitting the claws, it should be nice and parallel, going straight. Going, holding it straight and going down to that claw, I think I was right. This one is slightly up towards the end, a bit too much. Because when I hold that down on that claw and holding it straight, it's going up sort of up where the hole is so I need to move it it's going to hit that ever so slightly so I'm going to move it down just a touch if it's apparent that I'm waffling on a lot in this video take that as confirmation that you need to be very careful where you position your claws they're not ovals are not easy <laughs> even though I've worked with people that never really had a problem with them or any issues I've always struggled all right tell you what <clears throat> I've got four claws on now I had it all lined up nicely put the fourth claw on it just looked wrong making this oval is just real confirmation that I hate doing ovals I just feel like when I'm making them, I'm going backwards and forwards, like everything I, I hate making stuff. I like just doing every step correct and you just move along and then the thing is finished. Ovals, I'm always like, yeah, I don't know, I'm not sure, I've got to adjust this, I've got to adjust that. What's the problem? I can't even tell sometimes. I think it's just one claw is down. There's one way to tell. These two I like one end, so that's my guide. Yeah, it's like totally different. Yeah, this one is going up slightly. Ah, so let me pull that claw off, move it up. Right, claws adjusted. Measuring it again. 7.99 mil. 8.02, I'm taking that, that'll do. Although I'm saying this confirms why I don't like ovals, 
I do also feel like, now I'm making one just for practice, positioning them, I do feel like I can improve, just do this more. I haven't done it enough to really have mastered it. Right, I'm gonna clean it up now, and then let's have a proper close look at it. Didn't say I was gonna do it nicely, just a few minutes, just getting it all sort of flat and soldered lines tidied up a little bit. Right, told you I can get it done, but it's always a bit of a battle. I'm always going a little bit, at least one claw, going backwards and forwards, like I don't like what the way I've put it. So I really wanna, I wanna figure out a technique or a method where I can just do these two, then these two, or opposites, or just some, some way to know that I'm working accurately as I go along. Uh, let's try it on this. Let's go on that one, no, not quite. This is quite useful because it's see-through. Gives me an idea, you know, I keep going on about I want to bring out my own tools. One of these, really clear, with the lines really thin, really accurate. A larger selection of ovals with the claws, holes, marked out, whatever. So look at it. It moves about in there, so I've got to try and look in at the edges. It's too bad, you know. It's pretty good. I go back, always gives you indication of the accuracy. So if that was a collet for a nice stone. I'd be happy with that positioning. But what I'm not happy with is how difficult it is for me to get there. So I wanna, wanna practice it again. And yeah, I just wanna be able to do it properly. So that was that. Hopefully it wasn't too much of a strange video, but the point of the video was me doing something that I don't like doing. It's, like I said, there's no growth in comfort. You gotta do things you don't really wanna do or you don't enjoy. Find out why, just be honest with yourself, find out why you don't want to do it or why you don't enjoy it and then uh, do it more. <laughs> and then you can, you can work out all your little issues you have with it and then very likely it will be the, once you get good at it, it will be your most satisfying thing because it used to be a problem for you. You overcome it and now, now you're more skillful, a better jeweler uh, or better whatever you're doing, like it applies in anything in life. Like just lean into your discomforts. So yeah, as usual, I struggled on and I got there in the end, but I'm not happy with how difficult it is for me to get there, to get to the nice finished result. While I was filming this video, I got another new patron, uh, Rupert Hanford. Thank you. Yeah, really appreciate your, your contribution. Um, two of the patrons we got are David Turner and Judy Bailey, if I remember correctly. I think that's right. Uh, yeah, thanks guys, really, really appreciate it. So, moving the channel forward, so that's great. Thank you very much. Um, if you haven't seen this video, this channel before, uh, I'm going on about patrons because I just recently started an account. So I'm applying for, I'm, I'm reaching out to people to, to give me a bit of support to help grow the channel to the next level. Because I've got so much stuff I wanna teach you, but just working in silver and cheap stones, a lot of things I feel like I'm holding back that they're just not entering the videos. So I want to have a bit of money to be able to chuck out things specifically to be able to do proper jewellery lessons. Uh, so that's my dream. So we're working towards that. So yeah, the patrons who've already applied, I'm really grateful to you. And um, if you haven't already uh, become a patron, if you're thinking about it, yeah, please, please do. Because it will make a big difference to this channel. And um, I want to create a channel and a, and a Patreon account that will be really beneficial to to all people looking to learn jewellery and people who are already jewellers but are looking for variations of techniques or methods just they want to research how other people may do the job they're about to start it's always interesting to see what other jewellers are doing and how they do it uh that's it thanks for watching hit like subscribe share the video hit the bell pa -pang, and then uh see you next time for more diamond mountain cheers bye